A lot of times when you are using Airtable automations, you want to trigger that automation based on a certain time of day or a certain day of the week, some kind of schedule that you've determined. Well, that is exactly what we're going to be covering in this video. So if that's of interest to you, stick around and let's get into it. Hey, my name is Gareth Pronovost. I am the owner at Gap Consulting, where we help you to organize and automate your business and life. If that's of interest and you want to learn more about how we do that, do check out our website. I will include a link below. And don't miss our free Airtable crash course. It's going to get you up to speed quickly and easily using Airtable. But without further ado, let's just jump into the heart of this video and looking at my screen, you're going to notice that I've got a bunch of different tables, but the most important one here is my scheduler table. Now, the other tables are here just for show, just to demonstrate to you that it, it does not matter in the slightest what these other tables are. The point of this is you have an automation that needs to trigger on a certain schedule that you set forth. Maybe it's Monday at 10 a.m. Maybe it's every Tuesday at midnight. Whatever that is, so long as you can define when it is you want it to trigger, we can build a trigger for you using this methodology. So let's go ahead and jump first into the different types of automations that we have the ability to create. I'm going to create a new automation here. If you're new to Airtable automations, by the way, make sure that you first open up the side panel for automations to access it. And then once you've clicked new automation, you can see that the first step of every automation is to create a trigger. Well, in this case, we're going to be using either the record matches certain conditions. This is my personal favorite or record enters a view. These are very similar and you can use them in pretty much the same way. I'm going to focus on a record matching certain conditions and I'll let you extrapolate from there how you could use the other one. But the bottom line is this. A lot of other third-party automation tools, they have schedulers baked into their automation system. And hey, maybe at the time that you're watching this video, if it's a year from the date of filming, maybe Airtable has gone ahead and built a scheduler trigger inside of their automation platform. But at present, they don't yet have it. So we have to improvise. And here's how we do it. First and foremost, I have a scheduler table. And all that I'm doing in this table is using a formula here. And in this case, I'm using the now formula. You could also use the today formula if time is not of essence to you. In our example, though, I want to imagine that something is going to trigger at a certain date and time, not just a particular day of the week. So just know that you could also use the today formula. But in this case, I'm using the now formula. And the output from now or from the now formula is always going to be a pretty darn close proximity to this instant in time. So this is constantly updating in the background. It's not always exactly perfect. It's not to the minute, but it's pretty darn close. It's within a couple minutes and that's going to be more than sufficient for our needs. So the first step is to build that formula in one record. Now I should pause here and say that this table, again, it serves no function in our database other than running our automations. So we don't want any additional information ever to make its way into this table. And so to prevent that from happening, you can also then create some table permissions. And this is going to say, hey, listen, I don't want anybody to accidentally create new records in this database. And so you can go ahead and turn that off so that you never have to worry about additional records being created. And you can also do the same thing here for deleting. You don't want anyone to delete this record either because what you're doing, you're telling your automation to watch this one record and when it meets certain conditions, i.e. Monday at 10 a.m., that's going to be the trigger. Okay. So again, just a little pro tip. Let's get it out of the way. If it's helpful to you, it's certainly something I would recommend turning off the ability for people to add or delete records from this particular table. Okay. Once you got that out of the way, now you can build some formulas that bring in extra information so that whatever that trigger mechanism you're looking for is, it gets met here. One of the things that you might want to bring in is a weekday formula. So in this particular case, I'm using a weekday formula that's looking at our current date and time and it's setting it into my time zone. And this is an important step here because if you are not setting it into your time zone, 
it's more than likely that this automation is going to be using Greenwich Mean Time. Even if you've toggled off GMT, it's very likely that it will still be using it. So just be aware of that. You will want to use the set time zone formula. So this formula looks a little complicated, but if we take it one step at a time, what it's doing is it's finding the weekday of the current date and time. But before it finds that weekday, it's setting the current date and time to my time zone, which is mountain time. I am just outside of Denver, Colorado. You will want to adjust this so that it is relevant to you. So America slash whatever big city or you know, whatever, whatever uh, continent you're on, just go ahead and look at Airtable support docs for the time zone formula to find out how you can bring, bring in your particular time zone. So that will be unique to you. But the main point here is it's returning a weekday from this date and time. So here it's looking at 12, six, and it's bringing a weekday of zero. And so the output of this is always going to be either zero through six. So zero is Sunday, six is Saturday, and I'll let you guess what's in between. So basically this is always gonna output just a number. And so we can use this to our advantage if we want to trigger our automation on a specific day of the week, we can just set forth those conditions in our trigger. Additionally, over here, I've broken out a 24 hour time. So as you notice here, my current time is 9.24 p.m. And I like using a 24 hour clock here because you don't have to worry about AMs and PMs. You don't have to worry about accidentally triggering twice a day, you know, uh, at 10 a.m. and again at 10 p.m. So I strongly recommend using a 24 hour clock. Now in order to get in here, I use the date time format formula. And again, I'm looking at my current date and time after setting it to my current time zone and I'm outputting capital HH colon MM. And this is 24 hour hours and then minutes associated. And so it's translating the 924 to 2124, which is the 24 hour clock. And this is all really important because this is the part that I can now use to make sure that my automation does what I want it to do at the right time. So let's go ahead and start from scratch and build a new automation that triggers on Mondays at 10 a.m. So the first thing I wanna do is label it Monday at 10 and I need to build that trigger. I'm going to use the record matching a certain condition and of course I have to tell it what table and it's going to be the scheduler table. Now remember, we only have the one record in this table, so we never have to worry about extra things. It's only gonna be looking at that one record, and that is going to be used to trigger our automation. So what are those conditions? Well, for me, I said Monday at 10 a.m. So how do I get that? I can set up current date and time, weekday or that hour, so I have access to all these different fields that I've built. In this case, let's look at the weekday and make sure that it's equal to one. Right? Sunday we know is zero, Saturday we know is six, so we're looking for weekday is equal to one. So this will only trigger on Monday. And then we can add another condition. If we want this to trigger at 10 a.m., well, we should really get a, a time that is only the hour. So let's go ahead and build another one. So right here, this is actually the time in 24 hour clock. So let me rename that formula. And I can copy this formula and just build another version of it over here. And I will say, uh, just paste it here. And I'm gonna get rid of those MMs and the colon. And in this case, I just wanna know what the hour is. And let's name this hour in 24 hour clock. And so I'm getting that 21, which is what we would expect, right? So if I want this thing to trigger at 10 a.m., I can add that here. So I can bring in my hour, that's my new formula that I just built. And I can say hour must be 10. And it will only ever be 10 at 10 a.m., right? And it will stop being 10 at 10.59. And then once these conditions are then met again next week, on the following Monday at 10, it will re-trigger. So these are the steps to building a trigger that is unique to you, that triggers on a certain schedule of your liking. There are a lot of different date time formulas that you can employ to make this more robust. So if you want it to occur on a certain day of the month or on certain days of the week, you can build you know, additional triggers and additional formulas 
but this is the gist of it. You want to make sure that this is all set up. Now, once I go from here, I can run a test. Now, of course, it's not going to pull in any relevant data here because it is not the current date and time. Or the current date and time do not match these conditions. So it is a little bit difficult and you may want to bring in some placeholders just to help you set that up and then flip, flip those placeholders back onto the real thing right before you uh, turn this automation on. But these are the steps to building that trigger. Hope you got a lot of value from this and let me know what questions you might have below in the comments. As always, I hope you found that to be very helpful. If you did and you'd like to learn more, swing on by our website and check out all the resources we've put together. We have a free Airtable crash course that will get you up to speed quickly and easily in Airtable. And we also offer some paid services, including hourly consultations with our experts. We have some online group coaching programs and courses. And for the very advanced needs, we can build a bespoke project for you from scratch. So swing on by and I look forward to connecting with you soon.